Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and this, as you will have seen from the thumbnail of the title, and if you have read any of it, the description is a review of a new indie brand. Well, new to me anyway. This is Cult Candy Cosmetics and I picked up their Playhouse palette and one of their Playhouse liquid lipsticks to see what they're like. So my lovelies, if you want to find out just exactly how well or otherwise this palette and lipstick performed, you my friends you are in precisely the right place. As I have said for some time and oft here echoed elsewhere, but do they have a sloth straw? No, no they do not. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Bit of a later start for me today. I've still been up since half past four, but it's taken until 11 o'clock for my pain meds to kick in sufficiently enough that I feel like I can sit here and have a chat with you. So, you will have seen in the intro these. This is a a new indie brand to me anyway this is cult candy cosmetics and I picked up the playhouse palette which looks like this a pan bright summery palette and I picked up shade BB in the lipstick which is a nice sort of mauvey kind of my lips but better shade so thought I'd give that a go and see what it's like hmm. basically that's what we're doing today we're chucking some of this onto here to see what we think of it um, vegan and cruelty free makeup uh, based in the UK, uh, gives you all of the details in the, on the back for the ingredients, so you don't need to keep the slip cover if you don't want to. I like that. All too often you have to keep the slip cover because they don't put the ingredients on there. Obviously, it's not an issue for me, but if I've got a friend that comes around and wants to use it, and they have a allergy or particular um, you know, particular sensitivity to a certain ingredient it's useful for them to be able to find out what's actually in the palette now this remains a teaching channel and by virtue of that I will of course be showing all the blending and won't be cutting anything out won't be speeding it up because I'm not doing a cut crease today I'm just going to do an ordinary I'm just cleaning this brush off on microfiber cloth used to use colour switch but they're far too harsh on the bristles this is the only problem with starting later that my noisy neighbours are out of bed. Normally when I film at half six in the morning, they're not. I will try and minimise the noise and no doubt swearing that they will be having shortly, because they always do. 
they can't converse below a bellowing level and every other word seems to be a swear word I'll do my best to filter that out so that you don't hear it it may mean that I go slightly quiet because I may have to turn the volume down on me as well as using kind of background uh, cance noise cancellation right if my channel is going or if my film is going too slowly for you there is a speed widget up there please feel free to use it really won't bother me I'm not going to know unless you tell me and if you do tell me it's not going to bother me I might sound like a chipmunk but that could be quite interesting couldn't it I'm actually going to change, having cleaned that brush, I'm now going to change the brush that I'm going in with anyway. <laughs> Typical. Um, I'm going to start off with my Royal Nolan Nickel Chic Pro Eyeshadow Brush, which is the oval blender. Because I'm actually going to start with the colour that I go through my crease with. Now, talking of crease, I have deep set eyes, which are often mistaken for hooded lids. For a long time I thought I had hooded lids until I was researching at Payne Somnia O'Clock um, to see what advice I could give to people that had different lid shapes to myself and then discovered that actually I have deep set eyes, not hooded and that made a world of difference when it came to actually applying my makeup because it meant I was applying it for my actual eye shape rather than the eye shape that I thought I had I hear even the bigger beauty gurus say they've got hooded eyes and I'm looking and thinking no you've actually got deep set but yeah, okay crack on so I'm going to include a little clip in just a moment where I talk you through each different eye shape i.e. hooded and deep set I explain very clearly how to tell the difference and I tell you how to work around your eye shape to get the best finished look for your specific eye because hooded and deep set eyes have similar issues in the way that eye makeup wears throughout the day. Now if you've not seen my tutorials before when I'm doing eye makeup and when I'm explaining these I zoom in and I don't mean I zoom in to here like most people I zoom in right to here. So even if you're watching me on a small phone screen you're going to be able to see what's going on. Okay? Right, once the clip is done I'll be back to pop some of this onto here. It's a huge clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment white is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid 
if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus if I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds? if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap if you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open so, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues hey I am back right okay so I've never used cult candy cosmetics before so I genuinely have no idea how these are going to perform on my eyes that being the case the most difficult colours to create in here are blues, greens and purples guess which colours I'm going to be using yeah you got it right I'm going to start off with jello which is the purple there's only I think one matte, one shimmer in this, which is the green, the light green called Baby. The rest of them appear to be mattes. I don't know, the blue one might be a satin. Looking at it, I haven't swatched these yet, I just wanted to have a straight go. Right, so I've picked up some pigment, uh, it's a little bit dusty on the pan not too bad um, but I'd much rather have that and then go back in and just pick up the bits that are you know pick up the kick up to continue building the colour then put too much on in one go and have a warmth of, of colour that needs uh, blending out so we're going to do the usual Viennese waltz of blending so we hold our brush right at the very end so that you put as little pressure on the lid as possible these are stick on nails if you're wondering and then why do I call it the Viennese Waltz? well because we do natural turns towards the nose we have a fleckle when we get there and then we do reverse turns to come back out again the reason that I do this is because I'm 46 years old I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds so the skin on my eyelids moves that's just something I have to live with 
but by doing the Viennese waltz of blend instead. You're gently moving the skin on your eye around without tugging on it so that you don't get if you were to just use the windscreen wiper like this which is what you see the 20 year old beauty gurus using that's fine because their skin doesn't fold over on itself like ours does but then I, I know 20 year olds who've been slim their entire life that have got looser eyelids so it can also be a genetic thing um, but this just helps stop that barcoding effect that you can get. Right, you can see I'm just popping this just where my natural crease falls, building it out a little bit at the edge here and only taking it about halfway along. So far this is actually blending really quite nicely. Uh, I'm quite pleased with it. I've been trying to find new indie brands, especially with Blush Tripe closing down. Although, of course, we do now know that she is actually going to be um, opening another brand up once Blush Tripe is, is no more. But then we don't know how long that's going to be. We don't know what kind of products she's going to be producing. Um, we don't know if she's still going to be doing eyeshadow, she could just be doing lashes or lipsticks or, um, you know, it might not be makeup related at all, it could be skincare. We just genuinely don't know yet. Um, but I like supporting smaller indie companies, partly because I think they're far more on the ball in terms of colour schemes. I mean they were using the blues and greens long before um, your more mainstream brands were picking up on the fact that people were interested in those colours. Um, and because I think with the, the indie companies being that bit smaller I always feel like they have a better um, quality control. A certain uh, Jacqueline Schill may be excluded from that. Um, but I feel with a smaller run and where they've not got huge coffers to, oh well, you know, some of these palettes were a bit crappy, but it's like, we'll just refund people. Um, you know, we've made enough money, doesn't matter. We're, you know, we're buying them in for two quid and selling them for 30, so. Um, you know, smaller indie companies have much smaller margins in terms of profit that they may make. Um, and I feel like they have a greater control over the quality of goods that they release because it can make or break them. It really can. Right, I'm just cleaning this brush off. I'm going to use the same brush again to go into a couple of the other colours. That blended out really nicely. It blended out really, really nicely actually. I'm going to go into a yellow, which is Tweety. I tore, I tore a pudding cat. <coughs> yellows can also be quite difficult because particularly lighter yellows like this, they can very often have quite a lot of um, white base to them, which means they can blend away to nothing. I'm going to pop this through the crease to meet the purple and then just bring it a little bit further up the eye. I was always worried about combining yellow and purple together until I watched my friend Laura Goldstar Works film. She's actually an artist, so she knows, although I've worked in print and therefore 
understand probably more about colour theory than most people do. She's an artist, so she knows probably more than I'll ever know, to be quite honest. Um, and she did a film saying how you can... It was shortly after the uh -huh Honey palette came out by Colourpop. And she was showing how you don't just have to use a brown or an orange to deepen a yellow. Now I'd used browns and oranges and greens and I'd occasionally used a blue to give me like a teal effect when it blended with the yellow. But I'd always wanted to combine yellow and purple but the, the most I'd ever managed to do was all yellow with like a purple liner and lashes. I'd not been brave enough because where they're opposite each other on the colour wheel, if you blend them too much together they can go muddy and brown and just yeah. Um But her film gave you so many tips on how to use these colours and not just yellow and purple but any colours that are op opposite each other on the colour spectrum or the colour wheel. Uh, in such a way that they will work together. So thank you, Laura. This, I guess this looks for you. I'm not going to tell you what the tricks are. You have to go and watch her film. Same way I did. Okay. I'm actually really liking how these are blending. Tell you how much you actually get in each. Um, it's got an 18 month shelf life from when you open it, so that's good. You get three grams in each um, colour, so that is really, really good. Um, does this revolution one tell me how many you get in here? You get 1.1 grams in this revolution. And you normally sort of one gram is what you expect to see in terms of an eyeshadow. So the fact you actually get three grams with this, that's actually really quite impressive. Quite, quite pleased with that. I'm going to go into plushy, which is a real candy floss pink. Look at that. Again, I'm using the same brush for this. I'm just going to blend it on the edge of that purple and then blend it up the eye. Bringing it towards the yellow. I do struggle sometimes here and here where I get um, dry patches of skin. Although my skin is oily combo, I do suffer with dry patches here and here on both eyes. I get a dry patch right in the middle of my nose, don't ask. Um, and I can get a dry patch just round the corners of my nostrils there, which can be very frustrating. And on top of my forehead I tend to get them as well. And I'm just using a little bit of the pink to blend into the yellow and the purple there, just to blend all three together. This is turning into such a pretty look. I'm one of these people who I'll just... Unless I've got a specific um, look in mind, so for example with the Pick Collab, um, where we have set colours that we can and can't use. Um, or if I'm 
recreating a specific look then I'm the kind of person who will just sit down and put whatever I'm drawn to. I mean I was going to do purple and blue today but something just drew me to this yellow and pink. I did do the purple though. I did do the purple. Just going to build the pink up this side. I would like to. I like sitting back and checking the shapes both sides because your eyes are not symmetrical and unless you then photoshop the hell out of everything like James Charles does or Jimmy Chuck as I refer to him you can end up with although you've done the same shapes in terms of blending on both eyes they can look totally different because your eye shapes different Um, I don't Photoshop any of my results. The most I would do is if I took a photograph and it was a bit overcast and I wasn't getting a true reflection of the colours, I'll increase the brightness. And that literally is the most I ever do to my photos. Apart from very obvious Snapchat filters where I've got like horns or elliptical pupils and stuff. But when I put those up, I always make sure the first couple of photos are ones without any filters on at all. Don't use any skin smoothing filters or anything like that. I'm just going to pop back into that purple. Just to build that up a little bit more against that pink. Just to increase shade there. I think I might bring it down onto the outer corner of the mobile lid as well. Yeah, I like that. So how's your day been so far? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day watching me over your breakfast? Have you heard of this company before? This Cult Candy Cosmetics? Um, as I said, they're a UK indie brand. I discover a lot of you, because I follow a lot of UK indie brands on Instagram and all that lot. When I'm wandering at like stupid o'clock in the morning from Painsomnia and I'm wandering through Instagram just to see what I can see, um, I'll very often go through, I'll click on the search and then just scroll down and see what they suggest and they very often suggest new indie brands to me because I follow so many I suppose. But that's how I discover a lot of different companies. Oh, excuse me, burp squad. That's so lovely. Really, really liking this. Right, I'm going to grab a Voldemorphy, as Katie from Makeup for Lost Time calls them. This is an M321 brush. And I'm going to use my Cucumber Revolution Spray to wet the pigment after I've applied it to the brush. Never, ever, ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill the pigment and then you will need to follow my hard pan removal mini tutorial which went up I think last week when by the time you see this. Right, so I'm going to go into Baby, which is this gorgeous mint green. It's, it's like a satin. There aren't really any what I would class as real shimmers in here. They're, they're kind of mattes and satins, which in a way is actually quite nice when you've got more... I suppose this would count as a pastel palette, 
Oh, the green. Uh, you could do. Right, I'm going to dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is just stick it in your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the glue. Because then you won't have a brush, you'll have a stick. Right, so I'm going to apply this to the two thirds of the mobile lid, which so far has not received any pigment. Yeah, that's really nice, that's really nice and bright, really nice pop on the lid there. It's definitely a satin though, rather than a shimmer. But there's no reason why you couldn't then pop um, like a, a white highlight, like glazed donut or ice cold on top. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles to just blend it into the purple at the end there. I always get a fallout because obviously my eyes move. I do tend to get more this side because this side moves more because it's one I'm blinding and the one that got pulled around an awful lot when I was five years old. So, dry the brush to go back into baby to do the other eye. Now, with my left eye where I'm blinding it, I do have very very deep creasing just here as you can see and when I'm applying colour to the mobile lid I do actually have to stretch the lid out because otherwise what happens is rather than being blended onto the lid and sort of clinging to the lid the pigment packs loosely into that crease and holds there initially because it's wet but then throughout the day as I move my eye and it dries up it, f it flakes into my eye and down my face and it really hurts. So I'm going to show you the safe way to stretch an eyelid out if you have this issue. Do not do this if you do not need to. So it's about that far, that sort of like nail width that I've got the issue with. So I'll come another nail width out and then put my finger on and just really gently stretch that lid out but only as far as I need to to straighten the creasing and to get this blended on. So I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll and letting go and then just applying the rest of the pigment to the rest of the lid as normal. Now the reason that I left the same width again before I put my finger on there is because that way you know you've absolutely covered all of the creasing and you've got it blended across onto the main part of the lid. So you're much less likely to get it building up and then falling down your face throughout the day. Do you know what? I am I am really, really liking this look. This is so spring-like and summery and most unlike the kind of looks that I've been doing recently, which have been far more smoky and gothic. Right. I am going to pause you, my lovelies, while I pop some foundation and whatnot on, and then I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait a little while before I can talk to you again. <clears throat> I'll have a drink to try and stop this huskiness, uh, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. Hello, I am back. As you can see, I did my usual soap brows where I use the soap dry. I actually use um, the Revolution kit just because I really like the little brush that's in it. It's kind of like a, um, like a mini toothbrush shape. But you don't need to use that. You can just use a bar of soap 
and a spoolie. Um, and I have not got my camera out of placement. There we go. It's better. And I use the soap dry rather than wet, which leaves it a little bit tacky. So then when you put the powder on using your other end of your brow brush, A, it gives the powder something to stick to. Um, so it actually holds the colour in place. B, it doesn't transfer soap into your palette. And C, it sets the soap. So it kind of holds it in place all day. And I decided I was going to go for Crawley's, which was the green. And I liked it so much, I think I'm going to use that same green underneath my eye. So I'm going in with this flat topped brush and I'm just going to use that to line my lower lash line. I can't as a rule put anything in my waterline. Um, I have tried but I've always had super watery eyes. Um, my fibro has made that worse because watery eyes is one of the symptoms that I get with my fibro. Add to that hay fever and anything in my waterline, yeah, it's like Niagara Falls within seconds. Even doing this, putting powder this close to my waterline can sometimes be a little perilous. Um, if I get any of it fly up into my eye, I have to be very, very careful because it can end up a bit of a disaster to all these. Right, now you can use any um, chubby blender brush or smudger brush. I like this one. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped but chunky, which is great for blending out under your lash line. So I'm going to go back into Tweety, which is that yellow. I think that not only will that help tie the look together by bringing the green and yellow down here, but I also think it will just help brighten that lower lash line a little bit. This is a real spring like look, isn't it? I have to admit, I'm really enjoying using this palette. I've had it a little while, but I've had so many other um, sort of collabs and stuff on that I've not had time to use it yet. I didn't want to use it on one of my Zodiac films because I wanted to give it a proper, a proper trial out rather than being restricted to the colours I could use because of the Zodiac theme. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually thoroughly enjoying this. Right, I'm going to use the um, I Heart Rev Heartbreakers Unique uh, Highlighter and I'm going to go into this white side. This is a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay well over a decade ago. But lip brushes are a great shape for getting up under the tail of your brow in the highlight on. You can use a matte cream or bone shade or if you're one of the lovely melanin followers that I have obviously a shade one or two shades lighter than your skin tone. Um, I actually like to use a shimmer likewise on the inner corner and then I pull it down and blend it in with whichever colour I've run underneath my eye. I feel like a fruit salad right now. And that's not a bad thing. Right, my lovelies. I'm going to pause you one last time while I uh, pop some more of this highlight on my face, choose a mascara, pop some of that lippy on, and I'll be back with my finished look. So. 
again for you darlings it's going to be instant I'm going to squirt myself with some of this. this I've not got much of this one left this is the Rose Slay All Day which was the collaboration they did with Nakia Joy love this so much so I'm going to go spray myself with this see you right now I am back okay uh, I used my I, I did a combination of the white and the pink to do the face highlight um, the mascara I used was my little mini it superhero mascara that actually came free with a beautylish order that I'd made uh, and the lippy is of course the Cult Candy Cosmetics in shade BB so what do I think these applied really well they blended together seamlessly without any problem at all okay I only tried two of the more difficult shades as in uh, the purple the yellow and okay a little bit of the green um, but they they performed so nicely I really really am loving this look um, and I'm really looking forward to playing with this some more um, and maybe doing a more a more warm toned look with the pinks and the, this beautiful corally salmon down here um, and then I'll probably do a cooler toned one with the blues and the greens as well so yeah I if this is still in stock then I would absolutely say grab it you won't be disappointed because from what I've seen so far it feels lovely and it blended well you saw I didn't cut any of the blending out you saw how well they blended together without blending away especially that yellow which really surprises me because yellows as I said they tend to have particularly the pastel shades tend to have an awful lot of white as the base which means they can look chalky and or blend away way too quickly the lippy um, apply, I suppose really I should have shown me applying this it's a standard slanted doe foot um, it doesn't have the well in it which is good because it doesn't hold too much one dunk in here was enough to do one coat of top and bottom lip um, which on me has given opacity and is absolutely fine um, doesn't need a second coat it's dried down it's not sticky no transfer uh, at the moment it feels quite comfortable it doesn't feel like it's sucking the life out of my lips um, but obviously I shall continue to wear this through the day and I will let you know um, well you'll know if I like it because I'll use it again if you don't see me use it again it's pretty sure fire fact I didn't like it or I will tell you um, what I'm going to try and do once I've gone through I've got a, a pile of palettes there that are either new or I've only used a couple of times that I need to continue using both on and off screen to get an overview of how I actually feel on them. This obviously will now go into that rotation as will the lipstick um, and I will let you know exactly how I feel about them but so far I am very very happy with my purchase right if you are one of my 4F babies please double check you are still subscribed YouTube are unsubscribing people still and they are leaving my films in your news feed so it's not always obvious that you've been unsubscribed um, when you check your subscription status please also check 
whether your notification status has remained the same too. If, however, you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, you get all kinds of stuff on this channel, you really do. But if you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing there was something you enjoyed. That being the case, if you would like to join the nicest family on YouTube, i.e. the 4F family, that is super easy to do. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, and then click the bell, say yes, and all of them. I don't know how many times YouTube are currently asking you those questions. Three or four, I think, the last time I uh, turned notifications on for a channel. <sighs> and then hopefully you'll get told, I don't know, one in four of my films that I put up. Speaking of my films that I put up, I've got an awful lot of films that you can watch in my back catalogue. Not just palette reviews like this. I have my photo inspiration series. I have my one row in a palette series. I have my Zodiac series. Um, I have collaborations with other channels. I have group collaborations. I have tag videos. I have challenge for... I even have one where I read you my favourite poem. Yes. So, basically, as I have said for some time now, and oft here repeated elsewhere, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. And get ready to be entertained for the rest of the day, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is when you start playing. Right, my lovelies, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.